Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today we will be deploying a standalone root CA within server 2012. Now, if you don't know what CA stands for, it is Certificate Authority, and it's basically a well-designed and highly trusted service within your enterprise, which basically provides users and computers with certificates and maintains CRLs and optionally responds to OCSP requests. Now, uh, once you install a CA within your environment, it automatically creates a PKI um, infrastructure. That's what I need. The only reason why I need that is because one of my users requested me to uh, how to change the communication between your SCCM. He has HTTP and he wants his and he wants to change it to HTTPS. Now to do this, I need a PKI infrastructure within my lab environment. I'm doing this all within my SCCM server. I know it's not best practice. Most likely it's best practice to put your certificate server inside another server. Don't ha don't have everything in one one machine, okay? So let's uh let's get started. So let's open up your server manager. I, I already have it up and running. You guys want to go into manage add roles and features once you click on add roles and features just click on next click on next again now once you get to this part right here this is what we need to do we need to click on active directory certificates and services so click on that you're going to get this nice little uh, dialog box just make sure you add all the features click on that and then we're going to click on next now, once we click on next, we don't need to do anything here. So just click next here from here. Uh, just make sure you just read all the notes of what's going to actually happen. Uh, I'm going to click next. Make sure that certificate authentication is selected. Once that's selected uh, by default is actually selected, but just make sure it is selected. Click on next. Uh, I normally do restart the destination server in case it requires it. Hit yes. I don't think it needs it, but uh, just you know, just to be in a safe side and click install. Okay. So once the installation is completed, you're going to get this nice little option that says configure active directory certificate services on the destination server. So we're going to click on that. Uh, once you click on that, you're going to get the active directory certificate services configuration dialog box. That's what we need. Great. Now, if you want, you could designate a specific account that, uh, will have access to your active directory certificate server. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave it as an administrator because the administrator has access to everything. But just make sure that the account that you are changing it to has full domain admin and has rights to whatever, right? So I'm going to leave it as a default and we're going to click on next. From here, just make sure you click certification authority. Make sure that's clicked on and we're going to click on next. Now, I'm not doing an enterprise CA within my environment because I am not an enterprise. Remember, this is not a fully blown production machine. Now, enterprise CAs must be a domain members, which I am a domain member, and typically online to issue certificates or certificates plus policies. Again, this is within my environment. I'm keeping this all standalone. So that's what we're doing. Standalone certificate authority. Now, standalone certificates authorities can be members of a work group or domain. Standalone CAs do not require active directory domain services and can be used without a network connection offline. So this is what I want for this um, for this video. But again, most likely you're going to change it a little bit in your environment. So I would suggest that you're probably going to be using this. But for this, we're going to do standalone. So we're going to click on next. Now, from here. Uh, I'm going to pick a root CA. Now the root CAs are the first and may be the only CAs configured in a PKIA uh, hierarchy. That's what I need because this is the first one. So we're going to click on next. I'm going to create a new private key. I don't have a, an existing private key. So select that, click on next. Now the option that I'm going to pick is the one that's already default, which is the RCA hash Microsoft software key storage provider. Uh, I'm going to be changing the key length to something a little bigger, which would be 4096. And I am going to be picking SHA-1 as our um, hash algorithm for our signing certificate issue, issuing for our CA, right? For our CA server. Then we're going to click on next and just confirm that your common name for the CA is this, right? I want to leave it as that. Uh, the surface is correct. Make sure all these things are correct for now. It looks like it's auto filled with everything that I need it to be. So that's great. And I'm going to click on next. Now this is up to you when you want your certificate uh, to auto generate or expire. 
I'm going to leave it as the default for five years, but probably it might be a little different for your environment. Uh, I've seen a lot of people on their environment change it to one year, but again, it's really up to you. I'm going to keep it as five years and we're going to click on next. By default, this is where it's going to drop all the catalog and the database and the log information within our certificate um, server. We're going to click on next. It's going to give you a nice little uh, summary of what's going on. And from here, we are going to click on configure and it's going to do its thing. Okay, so the configuration has successfully installed. It's really quick. It shouldn't take no more than I believe a minute. It shouldn't take that long. And from here, we're going to close it. And we're going to close this dialog box as well. Now within the server manager, I'm not going to close the server manager because within here, I want to go inside tools. And within tools, we're going to see an option that says certificate certification authority. We're going to click on that. I'm going to double click on this dialog box to expand it. And I'm going to drag this a little bit to the side to open it up a little bit. I'm going to expand my, uh, my CA uh, node. I'm going to open that up just to show you what's in here. Uh, so we got a revoked certificate node issued pending and failed node. Awesome. So we're going to right click on our primary node, which most likely is going to be your, it looks like it's my domain name and the server name and CA for certificate authority. So I'm going to right click on that. We're going to go to properties and within properties, we want to go inside the, where are you? Extensions. Uh, make sure that the select extension is CRL uh, distribution point CDP. Awesome. And from here, we're going to click on add from here. I'm going to enter HTTP colon four slash four slash uh, two four slash. And it's going to be the name of my server. Make sure it's the full qualify uh, domain name four slash. And I'm going to do cert data. Awesome. And then from there, we want to make sure it's going to be the variable of CA, the name, and we're going to click on insert. So once you insert the suffix, you're going to get this right here, oh, but make sure right in between you have a forward slash. Yes. And the next thing that you want to add right next to the CA name will be, you want a CRL name suffix. So we are going to click on, where are you? We're going to click on Delta CRL allowed and we're going to click on insert. And at the very end, we're going to do period CRL. We're going to click on OK. We're going to hit apply. It's going to say uh, you must restart at the directory certificate service for the changes to take effect. Do you want to restart the services now? Uh, I'm going to drag this to the top. Cause it looks like it's added. That's awesome. This is what we needed for it to add, but, um, we're going to click yes. Let it restart itself. Awesome. So right now I have the, the new CRL, uh, extension that we added and on this one, make sure it's selected and we need two things to check off. So I want, I want you guys to click on include the CRLs clients use this to find the Delta CRL location and click on this one, include in the CDP extensions of issue certificates. We're going to hit apply again and let's restart the services again. Now continue staying inside the extension tab. We want to select the AIA, which is the authority information access. We're going to click on add and we're in here. We're going to do the same thing. HTTP four slash four slash the name of your server with the full qualified uh, domain name. So remember I'm using NY SCCM because I actually have my CA within there. So wherever your, your CA server is located, that would be the name of that, you know, computer and just make sure you put the full qualified domain name. I'm going to do four slash again, and I'm going to put it on cert data forward slash, make sure you put a forward slash because we will be inserting some variables. And the first variable that we are going to insert is we're going to click on here and we want the server DNS name. So let's click on insert and make sure you click on the location box and we want to put a underscore. And the next variable that we want to do is a CA name. And we're going to hit insert. And still right here, we want to insert another variable and it's going to be the certificate name. So we're going to hit insert again. And 
click at the very end of that last variable that we inserted, which was the certificate name, hit a period, CRT, and we're gonna click OK. We inserted an extension for our, I, for our authority information access, so that's awesome. And from here, we want to make sure we include the AIA extension on issued certificates. I'm going to hit apply and it's going to restart the services. Once that's done, we're going to click OK. And then from here, we need to go inside our uh, revoked it certificate. So we're going to right click on here. We're going to go all tasks and we're going to click on published. By default, it's going to pick a new CRL. That's what we want. So we're going to click OK. From here, we're going to right click our primary node and we're going to go to properties. And within properties, we're going to go to general. And as you can see, look at that CA certificate. And we're going to click on view certificate. We're going to go to details. And within details, I want you guys to click on copy to file. You're going to get a nice little certificate export wizard. So we're going to click on next. And the certificate export file format that we want is going to be a DER encoded binary X.505, which is a CER uh, extension. We're going to click on next on that. From here, it really depends on where you want to drop it. I'm going to drop it inside my desktop for now. And I'm going to call it root CA. Now let's click on the box root CA. And I'm going to click on save. Awesome. So it's going to save it to the desktop. Most likely, uh, if you have a certificate authority server and it's not part, okay. If you, if, if your CA server is on another machine, this certificate, you're actually going to place it inside your SCCM machine. You could just navigate to that, or you can save it locally and then copy and paste it to somewhere and then, you know, bring it over to your SCCM. Because my uh, my CA server is within the same environment as my SCCM, I could just save it locally and it's a little easier for me. I'm gonna click next on here, get a nice little summary. And this is all we want, no, no, and yep, yep, awesome. I'm gonna hit finish. Uh, the export was successful, awesome. I'm gonna click OK. And we're gonna click OK. And we're gonna click OK. And that's it guys, that is how you deploy standalone certificate authority within your environment. Again, uh, the only reason that I'm doing this is because I think on the next video, I'm gonna tackle that request from my, one of my users. Uh, he's trying to migrate away from HTTP to HTTPS within his uh, SCOM, actually for within his SCCM environment. I needed to create a PKI infrastructure within my environment because he already has that. I didn't have that, so I had to build that. And I say, why not create a video for you guys? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the video. If you have any questions about this or uh, you have any modifications or the way that you would do it differently, hey, leave comments right below. We're here to learn together for free. <laughs> so that's the best part about this. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.